Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series, I'm going to do a <clears throat> space station to space station transfer. We're starting out docked at the ISS in the XR2 Raven Star, and our goal is to get over to this uh, spinning wheel called Station 5 and dock with it. The big challenge that this mission presents is uh, fuel planning. We're really far out of plane with the Station 5, and as I've said in so many videos, uh, plane change equals expensive as a rule. So we're going to look at some different options that we might have to do this transfer. Uh, before I go any further, I want to give a big thanks to Dimitri for putting this scenario together and uh, sharing it with me. Uh, this particular spinning wheel comes from a download called uh, World of 2001, I think is the name of it. But rather than download that entire add-on, he packaged all this up into a, a smaller add-on and uh, shared it with me. So big thanks to Dimitri for, for sharing this. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here and let's jump into things. So here we are at the, at the uh, International Space Station in the XR2. Decided to change my skin over to the uh, Virgin Galactic. Looks a little bit better, I think, on some of the video playbacks, even though I really like that Umbrella Corporation skin. But um, let, let's, uh, let's think of uh, some approaches that we might take to do this transfer. If I were, you know, like thinking how I may have thought when I first got into Orbiter and I had just learned how to dock with the International Space Station, one one plan that I might think would be to undock from the International Space Station, go around to the ascending node or the descending node, you know, whichever one comes first, and use the full power of the main engines to to change my plane over to that of the Station 5, and then from there set up a rendezvous. So let's, let's consider that as, a, we'll call it plan one or option one. So looking inside the XR2, let's uh, bring up Orbit MFD and take a look at things. And so our periapsis is uh, 358.1 <clears throat> and our apoapsis is 371.6. So I'm going, to, I'm going to literally write those numbers down. I mean, I did that off camera. And let's target the Station 5. And we can see that the altitude of the Station 5 is 2,000 kilometers, and it's in a perfectly circular orbit, so I only need to care about that 2,000. I don't have to worry about, you know, its periapsis and apoapsis. So I've written that down. Now, how far out of plane am I with the Station 5? So let's bring up Align Plane MFD. Let's target Station 5. And we are 66.31 degrees out of plane. So that's a, that's a big number. I, I know that. Maybe as an absolute beginner, I wouldn't think anything about it. I'd be like, yeah, 66 degrees, okay, whatever. And so I write that down. So I have all of my information now. Well, almost all of my information. And there's, um, you know, if I were an absolute beginner, I would probably stop right there and just try to perform this maneuver. But once we learn a few more things, we have to take into account fuel planning. So... So let's take a look at what our what our budget is, and we can do that by bringing up burn time calculator and uh, looking at our estimate total delta v. Now, of course, we're docked with the ISS, so currently this number doesn't mean anything. So first thing I'm going to have to do is undock, Control D, Undocking and then right away to get rid of that ding, I'm going to go to ComNav and go off frequency. Fifty. I just don't want to listen to that. And then there's one more thing that we can do. Um, this is our total delta V based on the fuel that we have in the main in the main tank. But if I click here to add in my RCS, I can see that my actual total delta V is 9,111 meters per second. And sometimes uh, that RCS comes uh, can be important because you end up burning through all of your main fuel, but you have barely touched your RCS. So, you know, if things are really tight transferring that fuel from your RCS over to your main can can mean the difference between success and failure. So we have all of our information. We know what our Delta V budget is. 
we know far we know how far out of plane we are and i'm going to use that 66.31 number we know what our periapsis is we know what our apoapsis is and we know the target altitude of the object that we're trying to go to so taking the most simplistic approach possible plan number one i'm going to call it uh, what uh, what kind of um, maneuver costs would we be looking at? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me uh, switch camera views here to a new one. And I'm calling this plan number one. So we're going to start with our DV budget, and then we're going to subtract out the cost of the plane change, subtract out the cost of the orbital rendezvous, and then whatever delta V we have remaining would be the fuel that we'd be able to use to orient our vessel, to do those little uh, cleanup burns here and there, you know, mid-course corrections, that kind of thing. So how much of a plane change is this going to cost? You know, what is our plane change cost? So I have a plane change calculator here, and I've already punched in our numbers of 66.31 degrees, our periapsis of 358.1, and our apoapsis of 371.6. And then I've chosen Earth, obviously, as our as our planet. Uh, this is my old calculator I made a long time ago for Orbiter 2010, but it's still valid for Orbiter 2016. So these, this is our fuel cost. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 8,406 meters per second up to about 8,423 meters per second. But there's a caveat there. That, those numbers assume, I, I'm pretty sure the way this calculation works, is that those numbers are based on the idea that you would be able to do your plane change in like one nanosecond or something like that, some very small interval of time. But obviously we can't do that. When we approach the ascending node or the descending node, you know, we balance out our burn. You know, we do half the burn before we get there. And then there's only like one instant of time, you know, just a few fractions of a second where we're actually on that node. And then we do the rest of our burn on the other side. So we're not doing our entire burn in a nanosecond. And since we're not doing that, the actual cost is gonna be higher, but even so, this gets us in the ballpark. So this estimate of, you know, we'll just use 8,423, um, that's a good estimate, but we know that it actually will cost more than that. I just don't know how much more. So that will be our plane change. So then what about the rendezvous? So the rendezvous essentially just involves, you know, raising both sides of our orbit to match the orbit of the of the station five. And then, of course, you know, we have a little bit of miscellaneous uh, stuff that we have to figure out. So we get all the timing right. So once we're in plane, then we just have, we have to raise our orbit and we just have to make sure the timing is right so that we intersect the uh, the station five at the same time that we're passing that point. But essentially it, it boils down to just raising our altitude. So let's see, what does it cost to raise our altitude from 371.6 to 2,000 kilometers? I have another calculator for that. Let me go here, yep. Yeah. So if this is our periapsis, and this is our apoapsis, and this is our target apoapsis, then raising our apoapsis out to that point would cost 403.78 meters per second. So I, I also have put that number in, and you'll see that in a moment. And then once our apoapsis is at 2,000, we then have to raise our periapsis out to 2,000. And that would cost about 385.95. So now we have all of our data plugged in, and let's see if we can make this happen. Wah, wah, wah. Unfortunately, no, we cannot. So using our fuel budget and subtracting off our plane change minus our orbital maneuver, we have, uh, we're in the hole by 101.73 meters per second. And unfortunately, unlike governments, we can't just print extra fiat DV. It doesn't work that way. And the other thing to take into consideration is that this is like the best case scenario. And like we said, we know for sure it's going to cost more than 8423. We don't know how much more, but it's going to be more. So this plan is a non-starter. It isn't going to work. So let's consider another option, what I'm just going to call plan number two. So in plan number two, what we will do instead is we will raise, before we do the plane change, we'll raise our orbit 
out to 1,900 kilometers, which is 100 kilometers below the Station 5. And the reason that we might consider doing that is because when you're in really tight around a body, plane change equals expensive, massively expensive. But the farther out that you go away from the body, that rule of plane change equals expensive starts to have some exceptions to it. And the farther and farther out that you go away from the body, the lower that, that, the lower that price is to the point where if you're far enough away from a body, plane change equals expensive is almost not even true anymore. At least there is an exception to that rule at that point. But one thing that we might be able to get away with would be before we do the plane change, let's raise our orbit out so that we're just 100 kilometers below the Station 5. And then that gets us, you know, what, an extra uh, 1,500 kilometers away from the body. So then we do our plane change. And then once we have done the plane change, then we will do our orbital rendezvous. Now, I already showed you how those uh, calculations work, so I won't bother going through those again. I've already done them and typed them in here, so let's just take a look at this plan. So now when we take our, our budget and we subtract everything out, <clears throat> we have a little bit of a surplus. We have about a 730 meter per second surplus of delta V with the, uh, the condition again that we know the plane change is gonna be at least a little bit more expensive. And we know that we're going to have some orbital maneuvering costs and those other things that aren't completely factored in here. But this just tells us that we have an additional close to 730 meter uh, remainder to hopefully fit those extra things within within our budget. So that's plan number two. So uh, while plan number one doesn't work at all, plan number two is at least a consideration. Can we improve? Can we do something even better than that? Let's find out. Let's look at plan number three. So let me come down. So plan number three suggests that using this idea of raising our orbit to bring down the cost of the plane change, we're going to take that to kind of uh, a bit of an extreme. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to undock from the space station, the ISS, and then we're going to raise our orbit out to 100,000 kilometers. Now we could go way further than that, but let's just say 100,000 kilometers. Now we will have to time it correctly because if we just arbitrarily raise our orbit out to 100,000 kilometers and we try to do a plane change at apoapsis it's uh it, it it's probably not going to work very well so we will have to get the timing on it just right so that when we arrive at apoapsis we're crossing the descending node or the ascending node we want to make sure that we get that timing as spot on as possible but assuming we can do that we then uh, do the plane change at apoapsis and then while we're still way out there in space we raise our periapsis from 358.1 out to 2000 kilometers and then we warp time forward we come back down to earth and we use the main engines to lower our apoapsis from 100,000 kilometers down to 200 uh, 200 kilometers or 2000 kilometers and essentially you know that is our um, you know that's kind of like our rendezvous so what do, what do the numbers look like when we do that? So if we, if, we do, if we go with that plan, then we have a surplus of almost 3,000 delta V. And that's starting to feel more comfortable because I'm thinking, okay, that's, that's a pretty good excess. If, I, if, I, if my plane change ends up costing me, you know, I don't know, 750 or 800 or something like that, that's still easily within that budget. And when I come back to Earth, you know, since I had gone so far out, my periapsis and apoapsis are probably going to be a bit messed up, so I'm going to have to use some fuel to fix those. But that, that feels pretty comfortable to me to have an excess of 3,000 delta V. Let's look at another option. But I, I like this option a lot, but let's look at another idea. And some of you can probably guess what we could do to improve that plan. So let's look at what I'm calling plan number four. And essentially, Earth's atmosphere is the, is the big trick here. So we're doing the same thing as plan number three. We're going way out into space, uh, aligning our plane. But instead of, instead of raising our periapsis up to 2,000 kilometers to match the Station 5, we would instead lower the periapsis down into the atmosphere. 
And then when we come back uh, to Earth, instead of using the main engine to do the braking burn, we would instead <clears throat> just, you know, use Earth's atmosphere, uh, the drag from Earth's atmosphere to slow us down to bring our um, apoapsis back down to roughly 2,000 kilometers. Now, of course, getting this exact is going to be, you know, very unlikely. We would probably, you know, end up exiting Earth's atmosphere with an altitude of, you know, 2,200 kilometers or 1,800, something like that. So there would be some kind of cost here. But let's take a look at, let's take a look at what this looks like. So it's essentially, it's exactly the same thing as plan three, but we've just eliminated the main engine burn. So when we look at plan number three, you know, we have this 2,500 meter per second main engine burn, but by using Earth's atmosphere instead, we've eliminated that cost. But again, it won't be truly zero because we're going to have some fixing to do. But even so, that gives us a 5,500 meter per second surplus. So if we're trying to be extremely, you know, DV freak, then this is a pretty good option. That's most of the plans. There are other things that we can do. Let's look at, you know, one other idea um, that you can probably guess. This is uh, sort of what I did when I went from um, ISS to Mir. So we still have the same DV budget. Um, and I just kind of put question marks in here because this is, you know, virtually incalculable, I would say. But the idea would be instead of uh, raising the orbit way out or doing anything like that, we would just lower our orbit so that when we're going past the, the descending node or past the ascending node, we are using the atmosphere of Earth to steer our way through. And we would probably have to do that two or three times. It would be very time consuming. What would that cost overall? No idea. I probably would say... I can probably say it would be the cheapest option of all, maybe. When we went from ISS to Mir, this was a really great option because the the plane change difference was uh, was low enough that this made more sense than doing something like Plan 3 or Plan 4. I actually did a little calculation for that mission, and Plan 3 and Plan 4 were wouldn't work based on the amount of delta V that we had in the in the vessel. Um, at least I think that was true for the, uh, for the XR2 rescue mission, but nevertheless, uh, the, these plans, plans three and plan four make more sense for this mission because our plane change difference is so huge. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And that is a look at what our, uh, you know, our four or five options are. There, there are other things that we could do. Um, Dimitri was talking to me a little bit about this. We could also plan an earth moon sling which would be pretty cool where we go out we sling around the moon and we when we're really far out away you know we do our plane alignment and we take advantage maybe of the moon sling to do some of that for us that's a bit complicated um, i don't know that i want to get into that in this mission but it's a cool idea maybe we'll look at that another time so when we come back in the next part I'm going to pick one of these plans. Obviously, we can't do plan number one. It's too expensive. It won't work. We know before we even leave the ISS that we're going to fail that, so there's no point in even attempting it. Plan number two is really tight, but it might work. Plan number three gives us a pretty good surplus. Plan number four gives us the best surplus of all, but it might be a little bit more challenging than plan number three. So when we come back, we'll decide what we're going to do. I will see you in the next part.